So we're going to look at doing a short circuit test. Okay, now to do a short circuit test on a, a PV array, what we need to do is find the ends of each array, join them together, take a reading with a clamp meter, and then disconnect them. If you haven't got a DC isolator, that's where the problems occur. So what I've done, as I've shown you before, I've made this one up, okay? Now, what you do is you turn it off, connect the two ends in, turn it on. When you turn it on, it just links the two together and then I can take a reading. And that's what we're gonna do in a moment or two. What I wanna do is show you the problem when you haven't got an isolator because what would happen is you join the ends together, which is all nice and easy. The moment you take them apart, you end up looking like Darth Vader. So let me get the two ends. Okay, so I'll plug that one in there and I'll plug that one in there. And there's the two ends. Now look, two ends of metal. Put them together, not a problem. Take it apart and all of a sudden you end up with a nice little welding machine. Look, you don't want that to happen because it's just going to damage the the MC4 connectors. Okay, so what you do is you make yourself one of these, make sure it's turned off, connect the ends together like so, turn it on, clamp meter to amps like so, take a reading, and I've got a value of 1.46. Okay, that's how you do it. Now, the reason for doing it is to make sure that the system is working properly. Okay, now, when they design, when they make these panels, they test them under standard test conditions. The standard test conditions are 1,000 watts per square meter on the panel at 25 degrees. On the back of your panel, you'll see you've got a data plate. On this data plate, it will tell us what the short circuit current is for my particular panels. Okay, now it doesn't matter how many panels I've got in a series, that current is gonna remain the same. And we can see that's pretty close to 14 amps, it's 13.61. So when I do this short circuit test, if I'm getting a thousand watts per square meter on my panel, I'm expecting to get 13.61 amps. Now clearly, even on a good day, I'm unlikely to get a thousand watts per square meter. But I've got to make sure that it's working properly. If I'm only getting 500 watts per square meter, I would be expecting half the current. So somewhere around just below seven amps. Okay, it's not an exact science. What I need to do is measure the quality of the light. And for that, I've got myself a light meter. It's called an irradiance meter, okay? Same old thing. I've got a mega because I know it's reliable. You can use what you like. There's lots of different things out there. I think you can even get an app, okay? But, but I'd sooner do it like this. So let me just show you how to use it. I need to go outside and I need to point this exactly the same direction that the panels are facing and as close to the same angle as I possibly can, okay? So let's try it. First of all, I'm gonna try and do my five panels that are facing east. So I need to go outside and do a test. So I'm holding this meter at about the same angle as my panels and it's facing east. I've got Charlie inside, so when I shout, he's gonna push hold on the clamp meter. You can see what's happening in a minute. I'm gonna push this, give us a couple of secs until we get a decent read in. Okay, Charlie, hold. I've got just over 100 watts. So I'm expecting a tenth, if you like, of, of the maximum short circuit current. So when we go inside in a minute, we'll see what Charlie's managed to measure. It should be somewhere 
just over an amp, maybe 1.4, 1.5 amps would be somewhere about right. Okay, so what we're looking for here is a value of somewhere over a tenth of 14 amps. So 1.4 amps. That's producing a little bit more than we'd expect, which is fine because it tells me it's working. And the reason for that is it could be I never had this at the right angle, it wasn't exact, but it's near enough. That tells me that this system is working perfectly well. Okay, so I know that that section of the system is working perfectly well. What I wanna do now is a test on the eight panel side that's facing west. What we're gonna do is go through exactly the same procedure. I'm gonna connect the two ends to my DC isolator. I'm gonna get Charlie back in here to give me a, when I, when I shout, he can push the hold button. If it's a really bright day and there's no clouds, you can do it yourself. But to be accurate, really, if it's a cloudy day and there's cloud dodging around all over the place, you need to make sure you do it both at the same time. So it's always useful to have a, a second pair of hands. So what we're gonna do, we're going to isolate this first. Really important, otherwise we're gonna end up looking like Darth Vader, as I said. I'm gonna disconnect those. I'm now gonna get the five panel, the eight panel section and connect it. We'll try and connect it, there you go. Okay, I'm gonna turn it back on, like so. I'm gonna get Charlie to come in and reset that clamp meter. I'm gonna go back outside and measure the system facing west. I'm gonna shout to Charlie, he's gonna hold, and we'll see what sort of current we're gonna get there. We're still expecting somewhere around 14 amps as a maximum short circuit current at 1,000 watts. So now I've got this irradiance meter, I'm facing west, approximately the same angle the panels are facing, and I'm now going to push the hold button, stop Charlie, and I'm getting 550 watts. What that's telling me is I'm expecting half the short circuit current. If you can remember, just to round it up, 14 amps was the short circuit current. If I'm getting seven or somewhere near that, I'm gonna be a very happy boy. Let's have a look. Okay, so you can see there we've got 8.62, which is slightly more than half of the expected short circuit current. But again, that's not a bad thing. That shows me that this system is working perfectly well. Very happy with that. So as I said, I'm really happy with that result. I know that my eight, panel uh, array is working perfectly well. So the last thing I need to do really is, again, make sure you isolate before you disconnect it. Turn off the isolator, unplug it. Now I'm ready to just to reconnect it all and recommission the system. Just turn it all back on and let it start working. <laughs>